and documents and website structure. So basic sections of a document. Web pages can and will look pretty different from one another, but they all tend to share similar standard components. Unless the web page is displaying a full screen video or game, it's part of some is part of some kind of art project or is just badly structured. So we have the header, usually a big strip or stripe across the uh, top with a big heading and or logos. This is where the main common information about the website usually stays from one page to another. We have the navigation bar, which links the site's main sections, usually represented by menu buttons, links, or tabs, like the header. This content usually remains consistent on one, from one web page to another. Having an inconsistent navigation on your website will just lead to confused, frustrated users. Many web designers consider the navigation bar to be part of the header rather than an individual component, but that's not a requirement. In fact, some argue that having the two separate is better for accessibility, as screen readers can read the two features better if they are separate. Uh, then you have the main content, a big area in the center that contains most of the unique content of a given web page. For example, the, give the video you want to watch or the main story you're reading or the map you want to view, newsletters or headlines. Uh, this is the one part of the website that definitely will vary from page to page. You have the sidebar, peripheral information, links, quotes, ads. Usually this is contextual to what is contained in the main content. For example, on a news article page, the sidebar might contain the biography of the author or links to related articles. But there are also cases where you'll find some recurring elements like secondary navigation systems. True. A strip across, so the footer is a strip across the bottom of the page and that generally contains fine print, copyright notices, or contact information. It's a place to put common information like the header, but usually that information is not critical or secondary to the website itself. The footer is also sometimes used for SEO purposes by providing links for quick access to popular content. A typical website will be laid out something like this. You got the header. You got the, uh, what is that called again? The navigation bar, mm -hmm. the search, the body, the peripheral, the sidebar, and then the footer. Cool. Yeah, so I think the header, when you land on the page, you see that right away. But once you scroll down, you it disappears. But the main, but the navigation bar stays with you. Mm. I think, yeah. Uh, maybe. All right. HTML for structure and content. Can I read, read this? Sure. Um, the simple example shown above isn't pretty, but it's perfectly okay for illustrating a typical website layout example. Some websites have more columns, columns, some are way more complex, but you get the idea. With the right CSS, you could use pretty much any elements to wrap around the different sections and get it looking how you wanted. But as discussed before, you need to respect semantics and use the right uh, element for the job. This is because visuals don't tell the whole story. We use color and font size to draw sighted users' attention to the most useful parts of the content, like the navigation menu and related links. But what about visually impaired people, for example, who might not find concepts like pink and large font very useful? Uh, colorblind people represent, okay, random facts about colorblind people. Uh, in your HTML code, you mark up sections of content based on their functionality. You can use elements that represent the sections of content described above unambiguously. And assistive technologies like screen readers can recognize those elements and help with tasks like find the main navigation or find the main content. As you mentioned earlier in the course, there are a number of consequences of not using the right element structure and semantics for the right job. 
To implement such semantic markup, HTML provides dedicated tags that you can use to represent such sections. For example, the header tag, navigation bar tag, the main content tag, or the main article section and div elements. The side um, for the sidebar, it's uh, often placed inside main and the footer element. Active learning, exploring the code for our example. Our example seen above is represented by the following code. We'd like you to look at the example above and then look over the listing below to see what parts make up what section of the visual. Okay, I'm just gonna use visual code for this. So it wraps the words nicely. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I don't actually have a style sheet, so it'll look pretty ugly. Oh, true. <laughs> so I guess I'll just look at the picture they have. Um, or maybe they have a style sheet here. Oh, they do. Okay, I'm just going to grab theirs. Another page looks pretty. Um, okay, I guess we'll go through it. One second. Let me know when you got your your stuff set up. Cloning the whole repository. <laughs> it's pretty big. I feel like it's in the whole. Sorry? I feel like it will save time in the long run. Yeah, it might. Where is she at, though? Oh god. Here we are. Hey, all right. Yeah, that works. Cool. Mm, what did I want to do? Okay. 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 So here's a body. They have the header, which is the title. Header is And they have the nav bar. Um, which is an unordered list. Oh, these are dead links as well. I wonder how they got their list like sideways. Oh, maybe. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Do you see in the style sheet? Sheet. There's a nav UL. I'm guessing the list style type none is uh, what prevents it from being like uh, lining up, right side up. <clears throat> Instead, it's sideways. What do you mean by sideways? Like, if it was a normal list, you know how they're like, like an actual list? Yeah. Here, it's like home, our team, projects, they're like si beside each other. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, okay. Yeah. Like, if we take away the style sheet, it'll just be a normal list. Just a normal um, unordered list. Mm. Yeah, see how it breaks it? Okay. And then they have a form, which is a search box. I honestly forgot how to do these search boxes <laughs> so long ago. Input type search, true. Uh, uh, name queue. Not query. Placeholder search query. Yeah. Well, that's what. Next yeah. inside. Okay, once the navigation bar, you go to the main content, which is the center, the article. Mm -hmm. The article heading. So this has an article tab. So, and oh, yo, if you hover over it, it gives you the definition. So the article oh. presents a complete or self-contained composition in a document page or site that is in principle independently distributed or reusable. A form post, a magazine, an article, a blog entry, a user submitted component. So just anything in the body. So articles are kind of like div tags. They're just used to group up like stuff. Yes. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Nice. Then wait. So nav the element. I don't even know how to start with all this. <laughs> so much. A section of a page that links to other pages, or to parts. Okay, so this is the navigation. Yeah. So. Yeah, the navigation bar. Then the aside is the related stuff. Just a bunch of dead links. Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. Okay, it's just a well side. So the related bar is part of the main, uh -huh. main section. It's not separate. So my question is, so if you just had like a, a section that said aside, how would that look in, a, in like an HTML document? Well, I think it... Um, let's see. Certain aside. So if I took this like ordered list, right, and just put. Yeah, they edit the padding and the margin and stuff for the aside tags. No. Oh, it's not that one. I don't think I have this saved in here, do I?
Yeah, it didn't really change anything. Yeah, I think the aside is also like a development. Yeah. And they just it just separates it. That's all it's always aside. Tag. Okay. I'll have to use it more to actually learn how it works. Okay, and after the side and the main, then they make a footer. Uh, footer element represents a footer for its nearest ancestor sectioning content or sectioning root element. Footer typically contains information about its section, such as who wrote it, links to related documents, copyright data, and the like. Hmm. Yeah, copyright 2050 by nobody. All rights reversed. What? Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, honestly, the the web page kind of seemed pretty simple. Yeah. It was just CSS that made it look like, whoa, okay. Yeah, like if you delete the CSS, mm -hmm. it looks a lot worse. Yeah. CSS matters a lot. So I think learning CSS is just as important as learning HTML. You know. The way that I'm seeing it, like, honestly, the only other than for... Uh, the accessibility the only reason you'd want to i guess separate your uh html into like those groups is for css and javascript so like yeah, you target specific areas and mm -hmm. just uh, kind of like have those things do the one thing oh shit okay well i mean that seemed pretty straightforward So HTML, HTML. Yeah, I'll, I'll do this part. Yeah, HTML go. layout elements in more detail. Uh, it's good to understand the overall meaning of all the HTML section elements in detail. This is something you'll work on gradually as you start to get more experience in web development. You can find a lot of detail by reading our HTML element reference. For now, these are the main definitions you should try to understand. Main is for content unique to this page. So main only once per page and put it directly inside the body. Ideally not nested within other elements. Then you have the article encloses a block of related content that makes sense on its own without the rest of the page, a single block post. Okay, I see. Uh, a section is similar to an article, but it's more for grouping together a single part of a page that constitutes one single piece of functionality. Example, a mini-map or a set of article headlines and summaries. It's considered best practice to begin each section with a heading. Also note that you can break articles up into different sections or sections up into different articles depending on the context. So what's the difference between an article and a section? So a section is a block of related content. And sorry, an article is a block of related content. And the section is grouping together of single parts of the page that constitute a single piece of functionality. So like, yeah, you, know, and you know on like Facebook, would the timeline uh -huh. be considered a section and then the article would be like one post from a person? Uh, yeah, because article includes a block of related content that makes sense on its own without the rest of the page, a single blog post. Yeah. And then the section. collection of okay. all the posts would be a section. I guess, yeah. Okay. And you'd have like articles within the section. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, then you have a side contains content that's not directly related to the main content, but can provide additional information, glossary, biography, related links. You have the header represents a group of introductory content. If it is a child of body, it defines the 
global header of a web page. But it, if it is the child of article or section, it defines a specific header for that section. So if the header is in the body, but outside of article or section, it defines the global header of the web page. Yeah. So we so the header would stick no matter where you were on the page, I guess. Uh, if it's the header of an article or section. So I guess only when you hover over that section. Okay. Then you have the navigation. This contains the main navigation functionality of the web page, secondary links, etc. Would not go into the navigation. Oh, secondary links would not go into the navigation. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then footers represent a group of end content for the page. All right. Yeah, so that's like your copyright stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. S uh, non semantic wrappers. Sometimes you'll come across a situation where you can't find an ideal semantic element to group some items together or wrap some content. Sometimes you might want to just group a set of elements together to affect them all as a single entity with some CSS or JavaScript. For cases like these, HTML provides the div and span elements. Uh, you should use these preferably with a suitable class attribute to provide some kind of label for them so they can be easily targeted. Uh, span is an inline non-semantic element, which you should only use if you can't think of a better semantic text element to wrap your content or don't want to add any specific meaning. Uh, the king walked drunkenly back to his own room at 1 a.m. The beer doing nothing to aid him as he staggered through the door. And span class editor's note. At this point in the play, the light should be down low. Okay. In this case, the editor's note is supposed to be merely provide extra direction for the director of the play. It is not supposed to have extra semantic meaning. For sighted users, CSS would perhaps be used to distance the, the note slightly from the main text. Uh. True. One second, I'll be right back. Okay. Div element is a block level non semantic element which which you should only use if you can't think of a better semantic block element to use or don't want any specific meaning. Uh, for example, imagine a shopping cart widget that you could choose to pull up at any point during your time on e commerce site. Okay. It says a div element. Gave it the class shopping cart. We have a header shopping cart. So, uh, paragraph. There's a little picture for it. Okay. This isn't really an aside as it doesn't necessarily relate to the main content of the page. You want it viewable from anywhere doesn't even particularly warrant using a section as it isn't part of the main content of the page. So a div element is fine in this case. We've included a heading as a signpost to aid screen reader users in finding it. Mm. Okay. Warning, divs are so convenient to use that it's easy to use them too much. So they carry no semantic value clutter your HTML code, take care to use them only when there is no better semantic solution, and try to reduce the, their usage to the minimum. Otherwise, you'll have a hard time updating and maintaining your doc documents. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next up is line breaks and horizontal rules. So two elements you'll use occasionally and will want to know about are BR and HR. 
So BR contain, creates a line break in a paragraph. It is the only way to force a rigid structure in a situation where you want a series of fixed short lines, such as a postal code or a poem. For example, there was once a man named Dio Odell, and you have the break, and then it'll give you a new line who wanted, would love to write HTML. Uh, okay, blah, blah, blah. So without the BR elements, the paragraph would just be rendered in one long line. As we said earlier in this course, HTML ignores most white space. With them in the code, the markup renders like this. Okay, so you actually have the breaks where you want them. Mm -hmm. Then the HR element creates a horizontal rule in the documentation that denotes a thematic, thematic change in the text, such as change in topic or scene. Visually, it looks like a horizontal line as an example. So it's like those blue lines we've been seeing. Blue right? line, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Would render like this. Ron was backed into a corner and then you have the blue line. And then meanwhile, Harry was sitting at home. Okay. True. Next up is planning a simple website. <clears throat> so once you've planned out the content of a simple web page, the next logical step is to try to work out what content you want to put on the whole website, what pages you need, and how they should be arranged and linked to one another for the best possible user experience. This is called information architecture. In large complex websites, a lot of planning can go into this process, but for a simple website of a few pages, it can be fairly simple. Bear in mind that you'll have a few elements common to most, if not all pages, such as the navigation menu, the footer content, if your site is for a business. For example, it's a good idea to have your own contact information available at the footer of each page. Note down what you want to have common to every page. So common to every page, header, title, logo. See, why do they have to like write this out in pencil? Footer. I don't know. Their handwriting is pretty messy. Contains details and copyright notice. Uh, something about terms and conditions. And then number two. Notice. I don't know what it says there. Yeah. Whatever. Type language chosen and then accessibility. I guess this is just to show the process of the information architecture. Mm -hmm. what you just see like what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, next, draw a rough sketch of what you want the structure of each page to look like. It might look like our simple website above. Note what each block is going to be. So we have the header, we have the main content, we have the footer. So one or two sidebars depending on the page. Okay, so you kind of just draw it out. Uh, search for, now brainstorm all other content you want to have on your website and write a big list down. So search for flights, hotels, other accommodations, transport, things to do, special offers, popular holiday packages, winter sun, Disney World. Uh, I don't know what that is. Search results country specific info, accommodation. Okay, so you just write in all the stuff that you want to have on your website. Next, try to sort all this content items into groups to give you an idea of what parts might live together on different pages. This is very similar to a technique called card sorting. So next, try to sort all these content into groups. Oh, I see. Okay. So this is how you're going to organize the web pages. Yeah. You'd probably be doing this with your client. Mm -hmm. like, uh, ask them what they want, how they want it set up, how they want it designed, etc. Special search results, buy things, country specific info, special search. Okay. Now try to sketch a rough site map, half a bubble for each page on your website and draw lines to show the typical workflow between pages. 
the home page will probably be in the center and link to most if not all the others most of the pages in a small site should be available from the navigation from the main navigation although there are exceptions you might also want to include notes about how things might be presented okay okay so this is how I like to get from one page to another. Where's it, where's it going to go where? So check out, buy, okay. Hmm. Active learning, create your own sitemap. Try carrying out one of the above exercises for a website of your own creation. What would you like to make a site about? True, okay. That's going to be kind of hard to do here right now. Yeah. Maybe we'll do this with the uh, cohort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems like a really good idea. Okay. Then summary. At this point, you should have a better idea of how to structure web pages. In the last article of this module, we'll study how to debug HTML. Yeah, next is debugging. <laughs> 